Welcome back to part two of our conversation with designated drinker, registrar for the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Montino, Sarah Elston. So if you've missed part one, just go back, belly up at that bar and give it a listen first. Gina promises to save you a seat, don't you? I do, yeah. and it'll be minty fresh. It'll be minty, minty, so yes. minty. <laughs> so, um, your tips and tricks all about mint. What also we had in part one um, is Sarah shared the, her early days and her journey um, to becoming uh, part of the, her version of Knights in the Museum. Um, but now... <laughs> <laughs> she never used that term just in case everyone's clear. I'm just trying to work I it know. in. I'm trying to be I, clever and it's I, hurting me. I know. <laughs> It's like a dad joke. I know. I love it, though. We just learned what a registrar was. So I know. If you don't know what it is, like, give it a listen. Yes. And and let's get back to Sarah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Sarah, in case some listeners don't know, just give us a, well, you know, that one-liner about Namal. Yeah. So, Namal is the Smithsonian's new, one of the two new museums, the National Museum of the American Latino. And we have a Molina Family Latino Gallery inside of the National Museum of American History. And I am the registrar, so I do all the logistics behind the objects on display. That's so cool. That's so cool. That was good. She really wrapped cool. it up pretty good. She did. She did better than I did. Maybe she should have my job. And I'll just move stuff in the museum. <laughs> so uh, That's your career change right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we've, in part one, we obviously said you have the coolest damn job. So tell us, is there something else you've got to like, you know, handle? Well, one of the other things that's in our exhibit that's that's really cool is um, it was the first object that actually arrived at the museum um, on loan to us for the exhibit, and it was Ellen Ochoa's NASA flight helmet. And wow. Ellen Ochoa is incredible. She's an astronaut. She's just this unbelievably awesome woman, and, you know, we are so glad that she was um, generous enough to loan us her, her actual flight helmet, like, used in flight. Um, and it arrived and it, I, I unpacked it and it came out of the box and I was kind of like, oh, this is a big moment for me. <laughs> this yeah. is the first loan for this exhibit. You know, I, it, it was very exciting and it's, it's so cool to get to see the kind of imprint that people have on their things. You can see like a little sweat mark or, you know, a little like scratch on it that, you know, is not visible when we put exhibit lighting on it, but that kind of stuff is is really really cool to see that human impact and to get to touch something that's been up in space do you know really that's cool. what's really interesting that astronauts get to keep their helmets i never thought about that like i wow you get to take your helmet home you did go to space i know it's kind of cool i never thought that nasa would be like here's your helmet I don't know. You cool. didn't die, so they're probably no. like, congratulations, <laughs> you didn't die. You get the helmet. Sometimes you burn up on impact, so yeah. congratulations, you made it. Here's so, your helmet. Yeah, here's your helmet, and <laughs> never have to work again or something like that, I right? Know. I don't know. Um, I have a question. Do you ever have somebody like contact you and like, I had this really cool thing, and then they're like, we don't want it? No. Oh, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> I know so many people think they have the really cool things, like nobody wants to. Well, you know, Right now, we're at a point where we don't actually have any storage space. I'm hoping that by the time this airs, that is not the case anymore. Um, but it it is tricky right now because we're kind of in a space where when we commit to taking something into our collection, we're committing to caring for it for perpetuity. So we have to make sure that we are actually able to care for something. So right now, you know, sometimes we have to say, hold on a minute, we'll get back to you. Like I have a running list of every donation offer that, or you know, object offer that we've had. And when we have the facilities and the staff who are able to handle it and like make sure that we can actually care for these things properly, we go back to them and say like, yes, we're interested. And then it's not my decision to say no, which I'm very glad. I mean, I often, you know, if I if we did want to say no, it would probably be me writing the email um, <laughs> or making the phone call. But generally, that's a curatorial or director decision um, on that. So, you know, we're we're in a really interesting spot right now where there's a lot of excitement and a lot of people want to contribute. And we're like, yes, we want you to contribute. But hold on a minute. Yeah. Let us make sure that we're set up and we're ready to go. Um, but, yeah, it's it's. It's a cool. That is funny to, to think about. We're like, oh, this is not so cool. Sorry. I mean, we do like vote on stuff on our collections committee, and the committee can say yes or no, and then the director can also say yes or no. So it's a, there is a process, and there is, you know, 
No, I think this is important. I was going to say, I think it's important. I think a lot of people think that things are important because they're important to them. And then, like, you know, in a grand scheme of things, it's, like, not that important, right? Like, like, yeah. But it's my great-grandmother's butter churn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, uh, Corny made these in New York and they just shipped them to Jackson. Exactly. Well, I mean, like, when I, my kind of pre-museum star was in archaeology and the first... Did you want to dig? I did. Oh, my God. Can... Did you have one of those brushes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had a trowel, I had what's, a brush. What's the brush called? It's just a brush. <laughs> I wanted to have, it a, have really, a cool name. I wanted it to be like the, the, I don't know, I don't know yet, like the, the particle taker one. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody, she's like, hey, it's a brush. <laughs> people think that archaeology is so high tech. We use like trowels, dental tools, if you really need to get in close, buckets and like screens. And then you hose things off and then, I mean, one of the weird things about archaeology is like to test if something is, if you can't tell if it's bone or rock, you put it on your tongue. Oh. And if it sticks, it's bone. If it doesn't, it's, it's rock. rock. Oh, because of the that's, porousness of yeah, the, of the exactly. bone. Oh, also, that's fucked up. So you would stick like a <laughs> it's bone. It's not a human bone, Hold first on. of all. But how do you know? How do you know it's not a <laughs> human bone? What is it, like a dinosaur bone? Like, no. What I, did you put in your mouth? I need to know. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> It was a trash pit, so it's a great question. Um, probably should have asked some more questions about that when I was out there. But, um, yeah, I was digging in a trash pit, and there was, like, a bunch of, like, you know, rock chips, and that's what I studied was lithics. And then we had, like, this whole layer of, like, goat mandibles, mm. like, full mandibles and only mandibles, so only the part of the jaw, yeah. no other parts of the goat. It was very weird. Um, yeah, yeah. Weird I, I, don't I don't know. know. That wasn't my job to interpret it. I just dug it up for them. Um, and yeah, like things that people throw out are really important to kind of figuring out history. And it was a Spanish colonial midden in New Mexico, and it midden is a trash pit. Um, and like the coolest thing that I, I had the coolest little find. Yeah, it was. Um, I found a metal projectile point, so like an arrowhead and a, like a metal ring that someone had thrown out. And we were all kind of like, ooh, maybe someone was pissed at their husband one day yeah. and just kind of decided to throw out their wedding ring and <laughs> couldn't find you it. You made it a rom-com. <laughs> yeah. What year was it? Like, what, what are we talking? What um, time it period? would have been in the 1700s, I think, was was that level. Yeah, somewhere around there. Um, I, I only did a little bit of post-processing because like a week in the field is about two months in the lab of like dedicated time. And I was, you know, I just went back to classes. I didn't really <laughs> spend that much time. That was more my professor's thing, but. So, so I live in a house <laughs> from 1767, right? Oh, wow, awesome. So my house is, um, it's one of the founders of Middletown, I live in Middletown, right? At Metal- Maryland, and it's one of the founders homes. And we definitely know where you call it, what did you call it? A midden. A midden, where you know where their dump was. Yeah. Because when it rains, and like things are unearthed, it is ridiculous what is in there, right? Like they we found um, uh, baby baby bottles, like formula bottles, like what would have been considered formula, right? Wow. Which is not like formula that would, you would have gotten it from like a pharmacy, like in like mm-hmm. 1901, whatever. And then we like found all kinds of Civil War things. So we have like U.S. Um, uh, belt buckles and stuff. And I know this has nothing to do with your. No, that's good. Cool. No, that's awesome. But. We are realizing that it all is in one area. Mm-hmm. And then the farmers that we had it from, they used it for um, their composting. Mm. So it just keeps coming. Yeah. So I've never thought in a million years, like, that's important. I mean, you can get a PhD student out there to dig up your backyard for six years, and they'll do it. <laughs> like, people will do it. It's it's super cool when you have, like, where I was digging was my professor owned a house there. And he owned that land, so we were able to excavate, you know. And he also had the support of the town, so we were able to excavate and, like, kind of um, sketch out the barriers of what used to be, like, a watchtower as well. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it was really cool stuff. But, yeah, I mean, students are always... Look, I, I have a picture of me in the dirt, like, in a two-meter pit standing up, and I'm six feet tall, and I was the only one who could get down into the pit without ruining the wall, which we call a profile, because you need to look, and you can see all the different layers and see, like, this is a different period, this is a different period, and wow. a different event. 
So yeah, that's we'll we'll climb down into holes, climb into the dirt. <laughs> that's what we do. That's why I wear, it's that... why I wear sneakers every day to work, which is great. That yeah. I don't have to wear heels, and I, I gotta climb up on ladders. I gotta, cl- you know, fix lights, change, you know, dust, all that fun stuff. That's all part of the job. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> See, I'm like literally just staring at you. Like, <laughs> so it's really called the brush. <laughs> it is called the brush. I know it's not cool. It's not that cool. It's so cool. Do you get like? Do you get a hat, or do you just wear any hat? Like you have to wear one of those hats. Like... I was not designated a hat. I did bring like my dad's old cowboy hat from when we like had a vacation in Arizona. That's I amazing. never wore it though because it was too uncomfortable. So I just wore like my baseball cap. So you That's know what amazing. I think this girl needs. I, yes, yeah. a cocktail. Let's do it. And a medal. And a medal. Yeah, I'm getting yes. warm thinking about New Mexico. Yeah, let's, let's, do it. Let's, let's get this girl a refreshing <laughs> cocktail. Let's, done. let's do it. We, I write everything about you, right? And it said that you know you like mojitos. I love mojitos. It for me is all the different flavors of mint. This is not your typical mojito, right? I've been spending a long time working on getting my um, strawberry mint field to. Um, which is a field, cluster. I'll call it a cluster. It's a little bit bigger than a cluster, but to like actually start to thrive. And I finally have it and I'm super excited. So I wanna make a mixed mint, strawberry mint and pineapple mint mojito for you. Yeah, I thought it would be fun, right? Something different. Um, And also well-deserved after um, your uh, day at work. All right, so. This mint is definitely a little bit smaller than your regular mint. So when it's some, a recipe will call for like 10 mint leaves, you see the size of them. Some of them are really, really tiny. You're gonna have to do this more like a handful of mint. And I have um, big hands. So I would say, let's call it 20 leaves, of uh, mini leaves in there. And we're gonna put that in. And we're gonna muddle this just like a regular um, mojito. And we're gonna add simple syrup. This is plain simple syrup, okay? So one ounce per cocktail, and we're gonna put those two things in and we're going to give this a little push. We're not going to beat it to death, we're just gonna give it a little muddle to get it going. You can really, like, I'm standing over this, but like, the smell of this is so intoxicating. I love um, the smell of the strawberry mint. It's like one of my favorite, like all-time favorite things. All right, so, Let's talk about a mojito, right? Everyone has their own opinion of how to build a mojito. Mine is press the mint with the um, with your simple syrup, and then I like to put my lime juice in, not muddled, not not a fan, not a fan. You know, maybe next year I'll be like fan muddle mint, not muddle the lime. Well, I'm just kidding. This year I'm like no. When I have like something so delicate and beautiful, I don't do that. So you're gonna put in uh, one ounce of lime juice. So we have smaller limes here on the East Coast. So it's about one lime. If you're in California, it would be half a lime, sometimes a quarter of a lime, depending on where you are in California. So don't hold me to it. But I was in Florida recently and the limes that look aren't looking so good down there. Then we're gonna use um, Cotton Reed's white rum. I really like this white rum. It's a little bit drier. It's also made here in DC. And it's down the street from Buffalo and Bergen, so I will always support. So we're gonna use two ounces of rum. And if you're really having a shitty day, let's put it in another pocket. Let's put another half an ounce in. Who gives a shit? Right? Put a little bit more. Great. All right, so you have all these things in there. And we're just gonna grab some ice, which I didn't get. So I will get it now. And we're gonna shake, right? And the whole trick to a really good mojito is shaking for a long time. You wanna make sure that your glasses have ice in them and you're ready to kind of go. And I'm gonna keep shaking. And now I have Louise getting ice so we can go a little bit harder. So you're gonna do the hard shake. Okay. So we're gonna give it a look-see and you can see what's going on in there. And it smells delicious. So I feel like we're good. And like, honestly, a mojito really, all all you can really um, taste is obviously the rum and the, uh, you know, the lime and the sugar, all of those things are wonderful. But the the aromatics of it is what really makes the drink. So now I like to double strain my mojitos. No salad in my drink. Makes me very happy. 
can do a little fillies up. And then we're gonna top it off with a little bit of soda water and we'll be good to go. Just about a quarter of the amount. So if you have three quarters of liquid, quarter of the amount. Don't just fill your glass. If you have half a glass of um, halfway full, just put a little quarter topper on it. Don't add too much. You will water down your mojito and it will do it itself when you have ice in there, right? Okay, so lastly, we're gonna garnish this with some really pretty chocolate mint. We're not gonna eat it. It just looks really gorge, so we're gonna put that in there. Isn't it always? It really is. You know what's really nice? Sarah made the truck across the river for us, but we can do this for her. And then we're gonna use, um, a, you know what, mojitos need straws. I don't care what anybody says. So you're gonna use straws, and I have a sustainable straw. And I think these are made out of sugar. I'm not sure what they're made out of. Sugar cane. So we are good to go. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with using fibrous um, reuses of straws. So there you go. So we'll give that one to Sarah. And that is that. And that is a mojito. And that is a mixed mint mojito. Perfect. So cheers. Well, what do you think? It's delicious. And I'm very glad I took a lift here and not, <laughs> not drove myself. <laughs> I mean, we did minty, add a refreshing. Extra. I don't know. I like to add a little extra to the mojitos, especially at the end of the day. And if you only have one, I always say this, if you're going to have one and you like it a little stronger, that's fine. If you put it on having six, that's when you dumb it down. You're like, um. A little sessionable. I think, yeah, you make it sessionable or you can have just one and it's the end, you know, whatever. Well, you add added a little seltzer on top, right? That well, mojitos helps. have a little like bit of, yeah. Tall. Yeah, club, use club soda. Or, I like seltzer. Club soda is definitely more traditional. It has a little bit more salt, but like the um, mints that I used are like really fine mints. So you have like pineapple mint and strawberry mint. So they're not like, um, they don't need all that. They don't need that salty content. I don't know. Maybe it's, you think I need No, salt. it's very, it's perfect. So where are they going to go to get this recipe? You're going to go to the museum of the <laughs> National, not to Designated Drinker Dot Show, and you get the recipes, how to, and if you follow me on um, Instagram at Designated Drinker, you can see all the different mints and like what you're looking for. And if you have like a tiny little pot, you can grow all of your own mint too. Yeah. They Just don't love it tips. too much. They, they need some tips on that. All yeah. you do is reach out. Yeah, maybe in the spring we'll do like how to grow mint and sand. There you go. It, starts, it grows really good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Got a well, new balcony project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 50 50. It, work, it works great. So um, if you missed any of that, don't worry. Just scroll down into your episode notes. We'll have hot links to the website, to Instas, um, and especially to uh, the. Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Latino, so they can check in, see what's going on, what you're moving, where you're putting stuff. Yeah, we'll have some new objects up in November, hopefully, if, if it all goes to plan. Did yeah. you ever drop anything? Uh, when I was in, <laughs> when I was excavating, yeah, but it wasn't anything fragile. It was oh, just like a job. rock. Oh. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I did see it kind of juggle and fall. Oops. But yeah, but nothing just, in the museum so far. <laughs> knocked on wood. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back on Wednesday. It's, it's, I just can't find it. What you do is just so fascinating to me. I also can't get over the fact that they go through garbage. Yeah. So like this whole <laughs> thing is just mind-boggling. So give me. us another thing. What ha what else yeah. have you been um, able to? Well, I, you know, studying art history in college and then going to get to handle stuff by those artists in the museum was really cool. I, I before I was at the National Museum of American Latino, I was at the National Museum of American Indian in New York as a contractor. And I got to um, handle a, a black on black pot from uh, San Ildefonso Pueblo made by Maria Martinez, who kind of like reinvigorated the native uh, pottery trade in the Southwest and like reinstituted black on black and like perfected it for, you know, just, it was unbelievable to get to go into the case and, and grab those two little pots that we had on display there. That was, it was really like a full circle moment. Like, oh my God, this is so amazing Yeah, to, to get to study it and then handle it too. It was just... I had that moment and not quite as cool because you're actually handling yeah. it. But I was, when the first time I would, well, when I lived in Europe is the first time I started traveling around and we went to Cologne. And we used to go. We used to go shopping all the time. Um, thank you. Uh, we used to go shopping all the time, and none of my friends were into art history at all. They could care less. And I, you know, 
went to art school, so obviously had a lot of art history classes. And we would go shopping all the time, and we would park on one side of the Centrum. And that that's just where she parked. She'd lived there a long time, so I just followed suit, never really got to the other side of the Centrum. I, I kid you not, I did not look at where I was at, because this is way before uh, anything. We had no, we didn't have smartphones. This is way before that. So. Yeah. You mean a map? A map. What I mean? Oh yeah, my we, god, that thing that folds. But I mean, because we just go shopping. We're like going to H and M and this and that. That's when we didn't have H and M's in the U S. and right, blah blah right. blah. So we're just doing girls shopping day. So we had to park on the other side of the Centrum once, and we come out on the street, and I was like, double take, and I was like, that's the Dom, and they're like, what? And I'm like, that's the Dom. Those are flying buttresses. This took seven hundred years to build, and they're like, okay. You know, like it was totally lost on them. And I was like, the the kings, the, the three kings, they're supposedly buried in there. And they're like, uh-huh. Zero. Lost on them altogether. They didn't have good, like, they're like friends. Meanwhile, they're like the sock guys over there, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that guy makes good socks. Well, exactly. I'm like the worst person to go to a museum with because I'm like, look at the mounts. How do those cases open? And they're like, well, look at the art. And I'm like, but look at the mount. <laughs> so I'm the same in movies because I'm yeah. like, look at the lighting, or like, I wonder how that camera, how they get, the, you know, think about how how hard they had to get that the camera angle in, and this and that. Look at or the art direction. Oh, the color goes from right to left through the frame. Did you see how they did that? And Dave's like, could you just watch the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I can see the point where people start to glaze over, and I'm like, okay, and now we'll just look at the art. So yeah, <laughs> enough geeking out. Yeah, that's fine. that does happen, right? When you start talking a lot, like people will just be like, oh my god. Yeah, it was very sweet. My first date with my partner was at the museum I worked at at the time, and he was so patient and like actually was interested in what in my long spiel that <laughs> was our date. And, <laughs> I now I'm like, were you really interested? He was like, yeah, you were so passionate about it. I don't really know what you were saying, but you were really passionate, and that was awesome. Totally lost me, but you're cute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's probably thinking like, she's gonna she's gonna stop talking, then we're gonna go to dinner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> thinking ahead to food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, that's how they all are, right? I don't care who your partner is. The other person's like always like if you're telling them something like. We're gonna go to dinner soon, or we're gonna go to bed. I'm really tired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're gonna go out. I'm like, whatever. It's like no. they're on to the next thing. I'm like, Dave, are you even listening to me? Uh huh. Uh, you know how many times I'm like, what did I just say? And you can see that blank look. He's like, <laughs> you've been married a long time. What is you a very long like? time? Yeah. Very long I mean, time. That's it. So. so, do you have anything new coming up at the museum? Well, yeah, um, we have um, a new series of textile and paper objects that'll go up if everything goes according to plan in mid-November. Um, and our social team is really great about, you know, putting that out when we have new mu new objects coming up, um, when, you know, last time to see something old that's yeah. coming down. Um, we have some uh, beautiful uh, Luis Estevez gown going in that I'm oh, wow. super excited to see in the case. Um, yeah, just some really, really cool. So you're not going to try it on? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I think even if I was the, like this teeny tiny size zero, it still probably wouldn't be a good idea. Consider she's six feet. That's, I'm that's... six feet tall. I am not what the body that designers make gowns for. <laughs> no, you are. You're beautiful, by the way. She's like selling, her, yeah. she's selling herself short right now. She's absolutely oh, no, she's, stunning. She's selling herself tall. tall. She's selling herself tall. <laughs> there you go. That was good. I, I'm telling weak, you, folks. It's, the, it's the clothes. I'd be like, I mean, I'll yeah. just see. I just won't zip Or it. put the slippers or on. I, oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, like, there's so many. Like, I, here's my favorite thing. So you go to American, it's the Sony American history, right? And they have, um, they have the Dorothy <laughs> Ruby slippers, right? I'm like, all the time, I'm like, I'm like, nobody tried these on. Yeah. Nobody put them on and clicked them three times. <laughs> nobody would do it. Well, they, uh, I actually know the conservator who did all the treatment on them, and they actually don't match. The ruby slippers. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. They're heard... two different slippers that someone just kind of pulled out of the prop bag, prop bag basically, yeah. and yeah. they don't match. But I mean, Dawn did a great job. She's a conservator who worked on them, and now they're on display um, right at the front of their new exhibit, Entertainment Nation, which is it's got the droids, it's got you know Bill Nye, the science guy's coat. Yeah. They've got the Muppets. They've got all the cool stuff in there. I love the science guy. He's cool. I know. He's so cool too. 
I also like the fact that Jim Henson was University of Maryland, so I gotta go with that. Oh, nice. So that the reason I know about the Ruby Slippers is because I'm gonna throw a nod to the side, it's called Side Door. It's the Smithsonian's podcast. Yep. Ah. And it's really interesting. I love listening to that. Like it's it's when I need a like a I need to calm down or I'm like you know, like it's it's and it's but it's well done. I don't feel like you're just being wah, 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 at it's really cool. It talks about the different artifacts and different things that are going in the museum. That's neat. Yeah. I didn't know about that. There you go. Tip for the day. You taught I mean, me I'm, something. I taught you something. Look. I mean, I'm really heavy into the murder podcast. I mean, I don't know how I'm going to fit it in, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't have one more murder podcast about how you kill your spouse on the show. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, wait, did I say that loud? Yes. Take that off. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Last you. question. Okay. So. In this day and age, everybody has a spirit animal mm. that they identify with, right? And um, you might um, identify with um, an Egyptian beetle because they were in, like, in all of the cool, um, you know, hieroglyphics and everything, right? Mm. If you can identify yourself with a spirit ingredient, either for food or for beverage, what would that ingredient be and why? I feel like... I've never had them before, but I was listening to something today where they were talking about it. But I feel like a shishito pepper because like 90% of the time I'm kind of boring and bland. And then like 10%, I'm like, I have this random burst of energy (laughs) and like just kind of I'm randomly just, you know, more outgoing and fun than normal, (laughs) which is like. Kind of like my work too, right? Like ninety percent of it is paperwork, and then ten percent is the fun stuff, like handling the objects and stuff. So, I guess that I think that because like they say ninety percent are you know tolerable, and then ten percent are ridiculously spicy. So one thousand percent, that's the truth. <laughs> but when you have that hot one, and your eyeballs like roll a little bit in your head, and you've been like just eating them like a plate, like at a Spanish tapas restaurant. And you're just talking, and then randomly you're the one that gets it. Then you just you turn to your partner before you start to choke. And you're like, Try that and shove it in their mouth because you should experience the sweat together. It's a communal. That's a cool thing. I love that. That's yeah, that's a good one. That's really good. And you've never even actually tasted it yet. I have never tried it, and I'm terrified to, to be honest. What you don't like spicy? I can do a little. Bit. I'm Irish. And Jewish, like I don't, we don't, <laughs> we are not a spicy people, either side. So what do you, mean? you like salt? <laughs> I do I'm like salt. Kidding, we I'm like kidding. salt. We like boiled things. <laughs> With a little salt. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. You'll like it's t- most of the time. It's really tame. I'm telling you, it's that well, one time. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I like them. I like you, and I think it was a great episode. There's yeah. so much stuff. You're the yeah. coolest. Chick we've talked to all I day know, long. Um, and gotta, we hang out with each other, so that's also, a lot. Also, <laughs> you should reinvent the brush and give it a Rename new it. name. Yeah. And a new name. I will work on that. Name. Well, cheers to that. Thank you for coming. Thank uh, you so much. And cheers. cheers. The Designated Drinker Show is produced by Missing Link, a Latino-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, we craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Also in the Missing Link lineup of podcasts is Roger That, a podcast dedicated to guiding you through the haze of dementia, led by skilled caregivers. Now, if you're looking for a whole new way to enjoy the theater, check out Between Acts, an immersive audio theater podcast experience. Each episode takes you on a spellbinding journey through the works of newfound playwrights, from dramas to comedies and everything in between. Find Missing Link's League of Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And while you're there, please don't forget to follow, download, and review the shows. Your reviews help our shows reach new audiences. To find out more about Missing Link, visit missinglink.company.